There's a hundred thousand streets in this city. You don't need to know the route. You give me a time and a place, I give you a five minute window. Anything happens in that five minutes and I'm yours. No matter what. Anything happens a minute either side of that and you're on your own. Do you understand? Good. And you won't be able to reach me on this phone again. From the very first line, this film had me. The appreciation only grew from there. This movie changed my life. Twenty eleven was the year that my teenage days came to an end, crashing to a close in a field in Yorkshire at the finale of that year's Leeds Festival. A fantastic way to cap off a mostly excellent period in my life and launch me into early adulthood. But in the following years, my taste in what makes a good time would slowly change. Looking back, this transition seems to have begun with the twenty eleven movie Drive, despite the fact that I don't actually think that I saw it until twenty twelve, maybe even thirteen. This film managed to simultaneously cause a dynamic shift in both my music and movie preferences. Prior to this, I was almost entirely about the rock and the metal, little more. My favourite movies were mostly blockbusters that were interesting enough to hold my attention. Whilst I still do like both of those things, this film opened me up to new experiences that would forever change how I manage my media consumption. I'm Royston Charmaine, and this one might be a little more than a thousand words, I don't know, I write the introduction first, let's just see. Twenty twelve was a year dominated by comic book movies, as of most years this century. The two things that I remember going to the theatre for that year were The Avengers and The Dark Knight Rises, seeing the latter twice in as many days. And whilst both of those movies have gone down in my estimation in years since, I'd still defend them both as being worthy of my tenor to see them. Later that year though, after moving into my new flat and not having a PC for the first few days, and coming home tired from my shitty job each evening, I would just find a decent looking movie on my Chromebook, yeah I fell for that, play it on my TV and attempt to relax for a while. One such night, I came across Drive. From the first few moments I was awake. The opening sequence is one of my favourites in film. Not just for the music, we'll come to that, but for the suspense and intrigue it builds with little by way of dialogue and almost no exposition whatsoever. I found myself waiting for the big info dump and fast paced shithousery to begin, and it never did. The film proceeded quietly, almost serene, and yet gloriously violent and incredibly intense. This wasn't something I could remember having witnessed before, using the art of filmmaking to progress the characters and plot, rather than leaning mostly on the dialogue. I was a huge fan of Christopher Nolan before this, and I still am today. Tenet was great, you're all wrong, but he does tend to have his characters spell out the plot for the audience, sometimes stopping just short of staring straight into the camera and delivering an expository monologue. This film does none of that. I've seen it a dozen or more times, including yesterday, and I still have no real idea who the protagonist is, even what his name is. The love interest and her son, who provide the impetus for the protagonist to advance the plot, feel fleshed out and real despite the Wikipedia article for this film not knowing their surnames. This film is one of the best examples of show don't tell that I've seen in cinema, using the language of the camera to communicate feeling and meaning. This redefined how I appreciate movies, something that has grown since leading me to the taste that I have now, as my twenties draw near their close. The score for this film, fucking hell. Before this, almost everything I'd seen had either used an orchestral score, which I do have a great love for, or used whatever popular music they could license and shoehorned it in willy-nilly. This film walks a line in between them. Threading works from obscure artists into the plot in such a way that adds to the weight and feeling of every scene. Three of these tracks in particular changed me forever. For those of you who can remember my former role as Future Drive radio host, this will not be news to you. For the rest of you, here's a breakdown. Oh, you. How 
After the driver escapes capture from his first getaway drive of the movie, we fade to black, before cutting to a wide shot of the LA skyline whilst this song plays in the background. The title sequence begins, and the track is just left to spin. The opening scene hooked me on this film. This track let me know that I was about to witness something special. This track would eventually make it onto Kavinsky's only, at the time of writing, studio album Outrun, released the following year, an album that I still listen to from front to back on a regular basis. This track drives, pun intended, from beginning to end and the subdued nature of both the beat and the vocals serve to add mystery to their nameless protagonist. Despite it not reappearing in the film, I see this as his leitmotif, the music that sums up his person at this point in the story. If that was the driver's leitmotif, this is the one for Irene and Benicio. Egged on by his boss who can tell that he's taken a shine to her, the protagonist drives Irene and her young son home after fixing their car, via the dried up LA river in the sunshine, before carrying the young lad home next door to where he himself lives. Again the music is just allowed to play, using its calming soothing tone to convey the comfort and ease that this violent criminal feels within the pair's presence. With little to no dialogue and no mushy scenes, a very real love is set up between these two characters that we have hardly met and who have barely met one another. This is incredible music and phenomenal storytelling. This song changed me. My taste in music has a definitive before and after point marked on the day when I first heard this song. Amazing. Soon after, a party is thrown to welcome Irene's boyfriend and Benicio's father home from a stint in prison. The driver listens from next door before heading out, unable to handle his proximity to supposed happiness. He is surprised to find Irene alone in the hallway, and the two share a moment, before being interrupted by the other two people in the equation. The lyrics wield a dual meaning, signifying the love that the driver feels crushed by, and the loyalty Irene feels she must hold for the sake of her family. This is incredible. I can't speak highly enough of how this film uses music, and again as a song. It's so melancholy and dramatic and yet entirely earnest in its sadness. This is a beautiful piece of complex emotion expressed through sound. I am a changed man for having seen this film. My tastes in media have been irrevocably changed for the better, and I could not be happier about it. Thank you, sincerely, to everyone involved in putting it together. I love you all. If you've never seen this movie, I've barely spoiled anything here, please go and watch it. It is amazing. <laughs>